How far does greed and jealousy take you? Especially if you see that person to be in the minority to where you are. It could be discrimination by sex or race. But how much would greed take you when it involves the black gold oil? Would it take you to murder, extortion and whatsoever? Well, this race-driven murders would be the absolute end of your oil-built empire. Today's true crime case, we'll be looking into the first homicide case investigated by the FBI. This is the Killers of the Flower Moon, the Osage Tribe Murders. The Osage people are one of the native tribes located in the Midwest of the United States of America, mainly in the Great Plains region. They started off in this region before the Manifest Destiny came, which was one of the most horrific things that the American people ever committed to the native peoples, and kicked them out of the area. But after the colonization of the rest of the continent, the United States did give land to the Osage people, forming the Osage na Nation. But before that, settlers of the empires of Europe who settled in America described the Osage people as tall, fierce and the finest looking tribe on this continent. So they were handed this territory and they began farming on it and it, on this newly formed Osage nations they were doing very well for themselves on the farming front as the land they were given was fertilised and had some of the best crops in the United States so they, they started to get minor wealth and started doing well for themselves but the one thing that they found in a reservation would take them up to another level was the black gold itself, like I described in the introduction, oil. When they found this oil reserve in the reservation, they instantly informed the United States government and sold oil to them. So the Osage basically became very, very wealthy. So, the inevitable did happen and white businessmen <coughs> decided to try and move on to the territory and gain capital of their own because you know all money and Americans go very well in hand but the Osage people were very very firm in avoiding these Americans coming onto their territory at the end of the day they were handed this territory by the Americans I know Americans who are trying to stamp on this territory. But it's not saying they didn't let any in at all. They did let people in, but they had some real trust in these people. Which is foreshadowing in this video itself. But racist attacks would tend to happen on this territory due to the refusal of laying them on there. And the Osage people did suffer. But these attacks would take a severe turn several years later when a body was found on the 27th of May 1921. The body of Anna Brown was found in the Osage Hill area. Her body was discovered by hunters in that area in the following morning, which we reckon the murder took place the night before. And it was reported that the back of her head was caved in, her body was badly decomposed and there were two bullet holes there as well. The territory police investigated thoroughly and couldn't find any suggestions of Brown had enemies. So it looks like cut and dry, probably like a mafia style whacking sort of case. But the police surprisingly believed that it was alcohol poisoning 
Brown was divorced, suffered from depression. So, it's cut and dry. Somehow the police just let this story slide for some reason. I don't know why, but they did. This was the local tri police, so I don't understand either, guys. But her appropriate was awarded to her mother, Lizzie Q. Carl, and it gets more bizarre as we go on. On to the next thing. This is going to come at you like a freight train because it happens so quickly. The same day that Lizzie's daughter Anna Brown was discovered, a body was found in Port Husker in the territory and the person was Charles Whitton, who was also shot twice, which was bizarre. Only by that time, Lizzie had head rights for herself and inherited head rights from her late husband, which was Charles Whithorn, and two daughters. She was seriously rich, like stinking rich now, this is. To, to the, I just don't know how to describe it. A lot of these white American businessmen who are well known history were this rich. Trust me on it. And it only took two months so the body of Lizzie Q. Kyle was discovered. Now, in the space of two months, mother, daughter were murdered and Charles Whithorn, her ex-husband, was murdered. As I stated at first, nothing was linked together, but Anna's sister Molly and her partner Brian Burkhart had an interesting uncle. I'm going to bring in William Hale now. William Hale's history was little known apart from that he was born in Greenville, Texas on Christmas Eve in 1874. He would become very wealthy but a corrupt cattleman with his two nephews working with him, Ernest and of course Brian Burkhart. He would become very rich and would become a millionaire, millionaire in the years following the First World War. Hill was living the American dream, but obviously people like that do get very, very greedy. But the big thing is with William Hill, he was good at hiding his racist side. He would bail out many of the Osage people's debts and would help them secure good lawyers if they are needed. But the two-faced side of Hale would come out. He would gain the trust of these people to the point where they trusted him so much and he'd go on to break it every way he could possibly think just so he can get a bit of capital gain. And the one good thing about like Hill's personality that he saw now, he was very good at hiding his racist side. He wouldn't mind scamming these Osage people and he felt that the Osage were savages and educated and living off the state. Even though they worked hard and found their oil in their territory and had all right to have their head rights, all right to sell it to the government and all right to mine it. But Hale didn't see it that way. Hale and his nephews moved to the Osage country and he would marry off his nephews to get the good head rights. He would also be known as the king of the Osage Hill. He became wealthier from the oil and all the head rights. But not as wealthy as the Osage, because they were the indigenous people of that territory. They got the fruits of the labour. This made him angrier and more jealous, but he would take things to the next level again and again. On February 6th, 1923, Brown's cousin, Henry Rome, was found in his car was two bullet holes in his head. William Hill, <laughs> unsurprisingly, instantly became a suspect, as it was discovered by the native police that Rome loaned money from Hale. He loaned $1,200 and made Hale a life insurance beneficiary 
to his 25 grand wealth. But now fearing his wife and himself may be next on hit list, Bill Smith started to piece things together. And this was dangerous for Hale and the Burkharts. He narrowed down who could possibly commit the crime and the hits on them. This person must have an inside man who was not Osage and he looked at every member of the additional family and one that stood out the most was Brian Burkhart, the nephew of William Hale. As things got warmer, Bill told many tribesmen about this, but word did get back to William Hale and his nephews. Rita and Bill just started noticing people hanging about the house and it worried them that they were next. Bill did chase a lot of them off his property, but things had to change. So in order to protect themselves, Rita and Bill moved more into the centre of the town. Because if anything was suspicious, the dogs would bark. This is where it still gets even more mental, this story does. They killed all the dogs off and left them on the road. The people who wanted to kill Rita and Bill. So they left them on the road. Just to send a warning. But in the early hours of March 10th, 1923, Rita and Bill's home was bombed and it instantly killed Rita and her servant, Nettie Brookshire. Bill was caught in the explosion, but he would become seriously injured. He was taken to Fairfax Hospital where he would start collaborating his story to the police. He would die just four days after the explosion due from the in injuries he sustained in the blast. The investigators did look into whether he was murdered by a doctor who was in the pocket of his murderers, but it was discovered it was just the injuries. It was actually discovered that the bomb contained five US gallons of nitroglycerine, which is 19 litres. With Hale and the Burkharts nearly wiping out Anne Brown's family, they would become Rasik with the next murder, or Risqué, I meant to say, so I'm not I, I, that's me reading the French term for it. They become more Risqué with the next murder. The murder of George Bigheart, which really really raised eyebrows with the Osage elders. Big Heart was transported to Oklahoma City via train which he was accompanied by William Hale and Ernest sorry yes sorry Ernest Burkhart again why not because Ernest is absolutely everywhere. At the hospital the doctors discovered that he was poisoned via his whiskey so they also discovered it was possibly spiked by Hale himself because a lot of people knew that he was locked into for these murders. But Big Heart called his attorney William Watkins Vaughan for the rest of the videos. So I'm just going to go by his surname Vaughan. And he asked him to come to the hospital as soon as possible in Oklahoma City. So in Port Husker, Vaughan packed up his things, told his wife every sensitive detail about the Osage murders because he feared for his own life as well and travelled to Oklahoma City. The two men met that night. Big Heart had said he had suspicions about who was behind the murders and had the documents to support it. Big Heart died the next morning and Vaughn boarded the train back to Port Husker with the documents at hand. Railway workers went to wake up Vaughan in his carriage and discovered he was not there. But railroad workers 
would discover Vaughan's body near the tracks at Parrish or Pershing, Oklahoma, about five miles south of Port Hasker. His skull was severely cracked due to the fact he was actually thrown off the high speed moving train. But by 1925, the reports of these murders on the Osage natives grew from 13 to 60. They all were wealthy. None of them didn't have no hedge funds at all. They were all pretty much wealthy and family members. But there is a catch. The wealthy Osage people had their lands inherited or decided to their guardian, which were local white lawyers and businessmen. The Osage, the Osage elders requested the help of an infant organization, the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Federal Bureau of Investigation wanted to start investigating homicide cases and more serious crime rather than petty robberies and fraud. The new director of the agency, J. Edgar Hoover, landed his case on the desk of former Texas Ranger, Tom White. He was very determined to bring the killers in. So he started the investigation. The early investigations saw the FBI find a low level market in murder for hire to kill the Osage people for their wealth. The Osage police believed that William Hale and his two nephews were responsible for this murder for hire ring and they decided to follow this lead because come on it went hard work for the FBI to go actually this is the right lead this is this seems realistic and reasonable. Why haven't you followed it? So they did. So the FBI did decide to act on this and put undercover agents in Hale's ranch and it was discovered that he had several petty crime rings including rings with wealthy white businessmen across Texas which was absolutely bizarre because these people were living the American dream. So, this went from just a couple of murder for hire for money, which was, it is terrible, but it's mid-level murder, to national interest at this stage, because this is crazy. And White did bring um, Hale into questioning. But Hale was somewhat cocky, very confident with his story. So they realised they can't get the man this way. The only way they can get the man is through his nephews, Brian and Ernest Burkhardt. William Hale persuaded Brian to marry Molly Kyle, a full-blooded Osage. Hale then arranged for the murders of Molly's sister, her brother-in-law, her mother and her cousin Henry Roan to cash in on the insurance policies and the oil head rights of each family member. Other witnesses and participants are murdered as investigations and the conspiracies expanded, which absolutely opened up the case for the start massively. Molly and Brian Burkhart inherited all the head rights from her family. Investigators found when they opened the case that Molly was already being poisoned before she was shot, which showed that there was now perfect evidence of failed attempts at murder because their premeditation was quite poor. Brian killed his wife and a woman who bears three children with. I just got no words to say. And at last, the FBI felt they had enough 
evidence to make arrests. So, they made the arrest. They charged the three men, Hale and his nephews, and a fourth man, one of the ranch hands, for murder for hire. Hale was charged with the murder of Henry Roan, which was that happened on the Osage Reservation, which made it a federal case, while the nephews were in the Kyle family. Two of his accomplices had died before the investigation began, so it just left that one ranch hand who was charged being an accessory to murder. Ernest Burkhart pled guilty being part of the conspiracy, so we decided to talk to get a bit of a plea bargain, to say. He will confess to everything, dropping Brian and William into so much mess. There was no way their lawyers could absolutely win this case. It was cut and dry, over and done with. Bill and his accomplice, John Ramsey, were convicted in which Ramsey admitted taking part in the murder of Roan, as he was promised $500 and a new car for the killing. Ramsey met Roan on the road outside of Fairfax. They were drinking whiskey together, then he shot Roan in the head. Subsequently, Ramsey changed his story, claiming the actual killer was some man called Curly Johnson. Shockingly, <laughs> the jury was in deadlock for three days, and the killers were sentenced to life in prison. But Brian Burkhart turned state witness and didn't spend a day in prison, even though he was a murderer and accomplice. So why not give a man a free walk at life? Why not? America, the American dream, why not? <laughs> and Hale, Ramsey and Ernest Burkhart would receive parole despite protests from the Osage people because white businessmen, why not? This only brought the Anna Brown and her family's investigation to an end, but there's still more pretty much unsolved about this case. The murders of Big Heart and Vaughan. Various residents of Paul Husker petitioned Oklahoma Governor Jack C. Walton to bring a full investigation into the death of Charles Big Heart and his attorney William Watkin Vaughan. Walton assigned Herman Fox Davis to the investigation and shortly after the assignment Davis was convicted of bribery because why not? This case is mental enough anyway why not throw a bit of bribery into it? Because this has been fun to, him, to research and absolutely mind-blowing but although Walter later pardoned Davis because again corruption and bribery is a thing in America more than Britain the investigation of Big Heart and Vaughan's murder was never completed. So today, it remains unsolved for people to investigate. And clearly, he was with William Hale. He's dead. He killed him. There's no way about it. And I just don't understand why people can't put two and two together. Because Hale and, and his nephews have got poisoning history. Look back at Anna Brown. Sadly, in American history, not much is really remembered about this case. It is being put onto the back burner a lot in American crime history because the murderers of the 70s and 80s in America do kind of take that away from it. But William Hale would eventually be released in 1947 due to good behaviour and Ernest Burkhardt would be paroled in 1959 and shockingly was pardoned by Governor Henry Belmore in 1966. Bear in mind, these people were killers, but let's not remember them. Let's not forget the names of the people who was murdered. Anne Brown, Lizzie Q. Kyle, Molly Kyle, Bill and Rita Smith. George Bickhart and William Watkin Vaughan and Henry Roan. This is going to be made into a film and get the story immortalised forever 
by Martin Scorsese. It will star Robert De Niro as William Hale, Leonardo DiCaprio as Ernest Burkhardt, Lily Gladstone as Molly Kyle, Brendan Fraser as W.S. Hamilton, and Jesse Pellmans as Tom White. The film is due to be released in May 2023, so I think this is a good video if you do want to watch the film. It will be available on Apple TV, but this is the case for people who are looking forward to it. So yeah. This is the case of the Osage murders, the killers of the flower moon. This has been an absolutely crazy case, so if you did like it and want to see more true crime cases, give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment down below what you'd like to see. I have got another one planned after this, which I'm going to start writing soon, but I'll look in the comments to see what I can do after that one. If you do want to see more content on this channel, please give it a subscribe. I said I got true crime cases, I make documentaries, I do hiking videos and exploring abandoned places and historic places videos. So if you do like stuff like that, just give the channel a subscribe. And until next time, I don't know why I'm doing that, I'll see you then.